So we're kind of trapped in, in this... Right in the middle, yes. Yeah, we can't get out. There's a huge fire in the middle of the street. People are just going nuts. We've come to this abandoned restaurant on this hilltop. There's people squatting in here, living in here. And do you like living here? The black one, fighting, and the black one. It's not, it's not, it's not good. I didn't see somebody was sleeping <laughs> okay. down here, sorry. And where are we going now, Sean? We're gonna see, we're gonna track down Cortez. Are you ready? No, you can't get those guys. You, you huh? can't get okay. those guys in the shop. A bit of a situation, we've been uh, pulled over by the police. These cops are just shouting in my face. Sean's talking to them now, let's see what happens. I'll check back in with you soon. Haiti, the poorest country in all of the Americas. A country that has faced constant struggle from earthquakes. 7.3 magnitude earthquake, 220,000 people killed. To gang wars. Gang war rages on in the capital city of Port-au-Prince. Kidnappings and killings getting even worse throughout the country. Armed violence has reached unimaginable and intolerable levels. Countless kidnappings. The country's most powerful gangs is believed to be behind the kidnapping of 17 missionaries. This has become daily life. Tires burning on city streets, protesters furious at the government's inability to confront kidnappers. Corruption. And untold poverty. These are amongst the poorest people in the world. With an average salary of less than $3.50 a day. The situation has become so desperate that there is currently a mass exodus from the country. 200 migrants stopped at sea. Deep in the jungle in Panama, parents clinging to their children, bracing for the hundreds of miles ahead. More than a dozen Haitian migrants are dead after the boat they were on capsized. Millions of people fleeing, risking their lives for the chance of a better one. So what is this notoriously dangerous? country like on the ground. Well, I guess we'll just have to jump on a plane if we want the answer to that one. Gunshots and terror echoing in the streets of Haiti. What is this place? This is actually a war zone. Guys with guns everywhere. These are some of the roughest streets I've ever seen. And they said they're gonna arrest you. Well, I guess I'm going to a Haitian prison right now. Shame, shame. This country is so extreme. The assassination of President Trump. The furthest I've ever been pushed on any of my trips. So basically now we have to just get out of here because we don't want to be caught in crossfire. The bus will protect from stray bullets, is that right? Yeah. No, it's not for your We saw a kidnapping. So we have to wait behind this wall until the shooting yeah. stops. Who kill by the gun will die by the gun. Welcome back to Port-au-Prince, Haiti. If you saw the last video, you'll know that I'm not actually supposed to be here right now. We tried to drive to the very north of the country to see a different aspect. We were reasonably close and we came across a blockage in the road. People had hijacked cars, punctured their tires, vans and some big trucks completely blocked the road in protest because apparently some police had shown up, robbed the local people and stolen their petrol and sold it. That's just one of the many insane events that have happened here. We almost had our car destroyed when we were there. They were trying to puncture the tires with knives, take the car to block the road or who knows what they were going to do. So today we're going to go explore the city again and maybe try some different areas that we haven't seen yet maybe try to get a bit out of Port-au-Prince because it would be nice to show a bit of the other parts of the country but you know in Haiti you never know what's gonna happen it's really uh, beyond anything I've experienced as I've mentioned so let's go jump in the car drive into Port-au-Prince and uh, see what the day holds always nervous here all the gone tires look at that this is all yesterday it happened. All right, so we just come to this market area and uh, there's something big happening in the city at the moment. Yesterday there's been protests. Uh, they were lighting things on fire in the street and somebody was actually shot, killed here in the city. And the protest is three days and that's including yesterday, today and tomorrow. And so it's very tense in the city here. So we're going to see how the day goes and uh, never ending here. Sean's got some kind of, what is this, magic potion? I have to smell it, right? Zombie powder. Zombie powder. Okay. Am I, should I be scared? Go ahead. <laughs> so yes. 
Wow. <laughs> I hardly even smelled and it flew up my nose. <laughs> it like came out by itself. I know. Like a spirit or something. But it won't affect you, don't worry. Yeah, yeah, I'm completely fine. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little bit of bones in it. Bones? Yeah. Okay. Uh, human bones. Human bones. <laughs> there are things that he can't talk about concerning zombies, resurrections and stuff like that. Black magic. You're saying that this is like a soft drink that they yeah, put in Corona bottles? Exactly. Water, there's some sugar in it, and other things that you can't tell you about. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever they have here is kind of what they use as portions for magic and voodoo kind of cult. Cult? Yeah. I've been in Haiti for a while now and I've been seeing the most extreme things of my life basically. What's it like living here? What he's trying to do is try to adapt with the situations. I mean, when it's uh, sometimes he's, he's unable to open his business, he doesn't open it because of the insecurity and all the problems. For instance, if there is protest at this moment, all of those guys would have to shut their business. There was a, a man who killed and a young girl that was um, uh, injured. Yesterday, not too far from here? Uh, he's one of the activists who got killed. He's a political activist. And when these gentlemen are sharing all this information in quite a lot of detail, they seem quite nonchalant about it, you know? It just seems like, well, yeah, a little girl was injured and a man was shot. And they just seem like, yeah, that happened. Is this just normal to them now? Now what he's trying to try to adapt with, situ with the situations. It's become kind of normal to them. Hearing a protest is going to happen today, or a person got shot. It's been happening for quite a while now, and they adapt with the situation however it's come and if there's a message you can give to the powers of this country what would that message be that there would be security tourists will enter into the country and that he could sell his um uh, uh, his belongings um, and that's what he's looking for is it quite rare to see a, a white guy like me coming in this market yes when was the last time he saw a white then you thought they were in no, for for more my insecurity, a lot of problems. Yeah, during the there were problems of insecurity in the country. They don't come. We actually had planned on going to the beach today. We'd actually planned on going to the beach today because I want to show some like positive aspects of the country. But we can't leave this region because if we leave this region, we could get trapped out of it. Because if the protests come and they block the streets, we'll be stuck out of this relatively safe area of the city. People are going nuts. I really don't like the camera even when it's filming myself. Uh, so we have to stay here, otherwise we could get trapped out and then you don't want to be locked out of the safe area of the city when it's dark, or really any time. So uh, when I say safe, I mean yesterday there were fires on the street and people were killed, so safe has a different definition here. You know, Sean, it's quite a shame because we tried to go and uh, show some of the beauty of the country in the last video and then today yeah. we were going to go to one of the nicest beaches. Each time we try to get out, in the last video we were met with a protest and we couldn't go any further after driving all day. And then today we've been blocked again because there's violent protests potentially that could unfold, you know? For sure, we wanted to share a little bit uh beauty of haiti maybe the coastline and the beach that has existed toward the north part of haiti but unfortunately i don't see this is something that would be possible for us to do we can't go to the coast that's right on the city because that's all gang run territory and even if you step out into these these areas on the coast firstly you have to go through the world's most dangerous neighborhoods and even if you get to the beach you could be snipered by a, another gang right they even shoot children and stuff so oh yes it's not that easy at all i mean going toward the north it's it's a problem the central is a problem the south is it's a huge problem i mean it's quite difficult so we're kind of trapped in, in this right in the middle yes yeah we can't get out yeah i heard this protest will probably last three days so we'll see and where are we going now sean we're gonna see we're gonna track down protests are you ready <laughs> Thank you.
All right, guys. Um, bit of a situation. We've been uh, pulled over by the police again, and uh, because I don't have my passport on me, because I don't travel with it, because if my stuff gets stolen, which is, you know, it's very possible in this place, you know, you've seen what it's like, then um, I'm, I'm stuck here, right? And imagine trying to get a new passport in Haiti. It would be, you know, the administration doesn't really work here, right? So what am I, you know? So I leave it at home and it hasn't been a problem so far. Cops have pulled us up and stuff. But now they're like demanding that I need it and all this kind of thing. And it's like super intense, man. They're sh like, these cops are just shouting in my face, like in French. There was one guy that spoke English. He was a lot more low tempo, but um, yeah, one of them's not too happy with me. And uh, to be honest, this is like the, the furthest I've ever been pushed on any of my trips. Like. Uh, Emotionally, it's it's super intense. Like it's so uh, so overwhelming. Like really, every no matter what we do, there's issues, there's problems. It's 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 com friction. 24 hours a day friction. As soon as you leave that hotel, friction all day, problems. And you know, I've traveled in so many countries, and you know, some of the most intense, dangerous humanitarian crisis ridden places in the world and that nothing compares to this really so Sean's talking to them now let's see what happens I'll check back in with you soon the cops uh, this guy started to get like super in my face just shouting at me and they were trying to arrest me right oh, yeah that was the second time that you were about to get arrested again yeah he was adamant that I was going with him right he said you could go, but I'm staying. Oh yeah, yeah, you were gonna stay. There was a lady that came up, a police woman. Yeah, she was she, flaming this yeah, stuff. She was like trying to yeah. get this guy more angry than he was. But luckily, there was a a guy who spoke English and he was very calm and and well, professional. Well, a guy and he's calm and he knows his job. Yeah. As a police officer, how to approach people in a good professional manner. Yeah, yeah. He was the reason that I'm not in a prison now, right? Yes, of course, because let's let's say if all four police officers were as Agitated, you know what would happen because of just a single one of them that was quite well expressing himself. Yeah. Even the chief himself, the chief was very upset because the chief and was the one that was like shouting at me, you know. Yes, and which obviously I couldn't there understand. There was no them. reason and for you to do you it. You left the car, and again, Sean, you worked your magic, which I'm still confused how you do this because there's been so many situations where I'm like, it's finished. Yeah. And then you go away with somebody and you talk to them and then you come back and you're like, all right, we're off. And I'm just like, how does he do this? Because every time I'm like, this is it. This has got to be it. I can't have so many lives in this country, you know? Like how many times is it going to be where yeah. we see all these things happen and then you say something and you, you talk your way out of it, you know? It's uh, pretty yeah, incredible. The, no, the, the best thing is that, that we didn't commit any crime. We're doing our, what we're doing with a good idea intention and I approach him with a good intention. He re respond to me with a very good intention but at least I got my way out. <laughs> Thanks so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Now there seems to be the protest is starting in some part and there is uh, some tires that are burning down here. Let's try and take a look and see what's happening. I saw a huge fire in the, right in the middle of the street. Perhaps uh, the protest already started. So we're just walking, we're just driving through the streets and there's a huge fire in the middle of the street. Tires on fire blocking the road. No, you can't get those guys. You, you huh? can't get okay. those guys in the shop. Right. Right. Total chaos, as I was saying the whole time yesterday and since the day you arrived. I think Haiti has gone to the bottom pit. Are these, are these days that I've been here some of the worst of the country in like a long time or what like it seems like everything's just collapsing right now? It's always have been but right now the people are feeling that they're going through too much and that the authorities are not responding to their demands 
and and now everything is trying to uh, exploding so since the government allowed all those problems to keep piling up on each other until it reached the height maybe of heaven but now i think the people are on the move or reacting we're driving past another tire that has just finished burning so there was another fire right here my days here have pushed me to breaking point i can't imagine what it's like to be a citizen living in this country you know for years upon years of you know absolute terror and hardship yesterday activists are being killed in the street today they're right back out there still fighting for a better future for their country but yeah doesn't seem to be working does it well there's a lot of people who love their country and there is so many also that willing to leave that bit that there is no way to leave this country but i believe most haitians just love their country and they want to find a solutions in a way that they and their own country can have a better life instead of living in some other country that, that that's not their own so i believe that's the main reasons why many of them wants to live here it's the same for me i love my country and I would love that everything that should be done in this country in a way that the people can find a better life and they don't have to leave this country or even uh, take the boats and try to, you know, die in the middle of the sea and try to leave this country. Merci, monsieur. Merci, merci. This is airport over there. Airport, yeah. So we've come up to this amazing viewpoint, really. You can see everywhere in the city, and I think it's an old abandoned hotel. So all this coastline is uh, occupied by gangs, so you can't, you can't go to these beaches, like I was mentioning. You have to drive like an hour and a half minimum to uh, another beach. We just tried to drive to that beach uh, because the process hadn't started at that point and we thought we might be able to make it after all. But we get down to that main road, we're driving through gang territory uh, and then there's just a full roadblock and we're like, you know, you got to read the omens sometimes. It was just one bad thing after the next and it was just not, you know, going in a, a great momentum really. It was, it was, you know, you saw it. We decided to come back up here and look down on the city. And even on the way here, I pulled into a travel agent because I wanted to buy flights tomorrow. Sean and I wanted to go to Carpathian, the place we tried to go in the last video, but we were stopped. I wanted to go there, fly there, try and show the positive side of the country, you know, because that's like the more beautiful, more stable area. But there's no available flights. It's not possible to get there at the moment. It's a real shame because it's been absolute horrible things that we've, I've been documenting, but you know, I, I, I am trying to find some some hope and some light but it's proving really difficult i just have to be honest with you with that you know it's proving to be quite the challenge to find anything that's not terrifying or extremely depressing i mean i've been targeted by the police so many times here the craziest thing is is i had a, a gang member down in the most dangerous neighborhood and he was walking right behind me to stop bullets hitting me i've been looked after better by the gangs here than the police that's for sure and that's not me promoting gangs or saying they're completely morally sound guys it's just an interesting observation right by no means am I saying what the gangs do is you know okay at all but it's just an interesting observation I think that I felt more safe around gang members than I do around police take that for what it's worth I'm not trying to make any point by saying that but I just thought it was interesting to point that out you know I'm just coming and I get to visit and leave people live here they live through this for their entire lifetime this country hasn't been stable for a long time and it's definitely not going in a right direction I mean talking to Sean he says it's the worst it's been in his memory even just in the, in the time that I've arrived, it's getting progressively worse. Petrol's gone up 33% since the last video I made. No wonder people are going crazy and lighting things on fire and stealing cars to block roads. What do you expect? They just push past the limit of no return, you know? You can't, you can't just keep, you know, the pressure cooker's boiling and boiling, it's gonna explode. And that's what's happening. to this abandoned restaurant on this hilltop it used to be popular I think back in the 80s over the years and tourism dropping off and things it's just been abandoned and there's people squatting in here living in here so really nice people the kids are smiling and things we're gonna have a look at where they live up here with this 
million dollar view, right? I'm <coughs> sleeping here when I do my painting. You know. Oh, you're an artist. Yes, oh, you right. saw you saw me down here do the painting. Oh, you're selling them. Y yes, oh, okay. I sell painting. I do. Right. But I can show you. Um, no problem. You don't have any problem. I can show you my books. You know. But you see, and um, uh, does it mean? This one. Wow. This is my license. This is your artwork then? Yes, the and painting. That's you. Yeah, it's me. This is painting I built. Wow. This painting, it's my painting. Have you traveled in the US? Or where did you learn English? When I go to school, I studied little English. Okay. But you know, I'm a salesman. I, buy, I sell my painting. I sell um, something word mahogany. You know, when I talk to you, you talk to me. All but right. I practice my English, you come to my teacher. So you meet foreigners and, <laughs> yes. and, you, and you talk, right? Yes, when yeah. you talk to me, but I'm practice, practice right. English, but there's no, I, I talk. Man. Not, <laughs> not very, very well, but just... Good enough, yeah. And do you like living here? Yes, yes. Yeah, you got an Adam Sandler poster up there? But, uh... Yes, you can see this one. Yeah. Is the film? Oh, sorry, I didn't realize somebody oh. was, I didn't see somebody was sleeping oh, okay. down here, sorry. <laughs> Is life bad or good in Haiti? But it's not good for me. Very bad. It's not good for me. Uh -huh. Because, you know, you know I'm Pentea, but if the have any tourists in my country, but uh, my business can't, can't work, you know, mm. it's very bad now. It's very bad. But if I, if I have a chance for change the, the world, for go analysis is better for me. So you want to go to America? Yes, I okay. want to go because you know. And can you? Can you go? Is it possible? I have people for go, but I have any money. I don't have any for the power for go there. What is the big problem now in the country? What what problem? And the problem politic. Okay. And Haiti is a bad politic. But when they fighting, I don't know, I don't see f why they fighting. Because the black one fighting and the black one. But it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not good. It's not good. Right, so look, just people fighting each other and nothing good happening after. They fighting, they not know. They don't for know why. what? They, uh -huh. they fighting, but they not know for what they fighting. If the politic, you know, can I can say, uh, give the people food and give the people an uh, opportunity for working is good, but it's, uh, it's a bad politic in Haiti. Do you see less and less tourists coming here? Yes, no, because you know the problem in Haiti, the, the tourists can't come in. Because you know, if you, you have one life, you don't have any two life here. But if I kill you, but you never come, come back come back and hit you again. Very, very dangerous. Very dangerous. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, merci. Uh -huh. Thank you too. I wish you good luck. Thank yeah. you. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the shop. I'm going to go to the shop. I'm going to go to the shop. No, I'm going to go to the shop. This is another room of uh, the restaurant which people are still living in up here. Back in the sanctuary of this nice hotel room here. I mean, it's not an exaggeration that when I walk through those doors at the end of the day, just huge relief. It's getting more and more kind of pressure every day because of the things that I've seen. And there hasn't been one day on this trip that hasn't had some kind of extreme event really unhinged. I mean, I just hope that it comes through on the videos because obviously I can't be filming when a police officer is in my face shouting at me or when I'm seeing a kidnapping happening or when there's somebody with a knife trying to stab the tires of our car and keep us stranded in the middle of nowhere while they're hijacking cars to block a road or while gangsters are running around with AR-15s pointing them at our vehicle. I can't articulate 
manipulate that. I can't show it on video, but uh, I just hope that you get the <laughs> the grasp of things, you know, almost being arrested by the military. That's another one. I mean, you know, this country every day is just getting more and more heavy. Tires on fire in the street today. Somebody was killed down the road yesterday, just near this hotel. Sean was telling me that he thinks that some of those police officers today were trying to, you know, play a trick because I have a press card. They took that and then they took Sean's ID and what could have been happening is they were trying to send me back to get my passport then they would have called ahead to another cop and then caught us and if Sean didn't have his license and I had no absolutely no documentation then they could have just straight out thrown us in prison because you have to have an ID in this country. Sean's been telling me for the longest time tourists and or journalists coming here you don't need to carry your passport because if you carry a passport and you get robbed which can easily happen here I'm sure that's not too much of a surprise to you considering the state of the place you lose your documentation then you're stranded in, in Haiti it would be a huge mission to try and get any form of documentation and get out of this country and the can of worms that would open so going out without a passport is I'm not the only one doing this this is what foreigners coming to Haiti have been doing for a long time at least in Port-au-Prince especially in the neighborhoods in the areas that I'm going into it's not the place you take very valuable things like your international identification that you need to travel out of here. It was really nice after, you know, almost getting arrested and after coming across tires burning in the street and when we were looking at that fire in the street, Sean was saying stay against the wall, just try and not stick out. And you never know, it's so unhinged anything could happen if they see me standing there. I don't like that kind of attention and obviously as a white guy in a, in a black nation, I stick out like an absolute you know, sore thumb. So it was quite nice out of those extreme scenarios, you know, getting out of that and get up in the hills and just be up there and, and meet the artist, that lovely man, and just take a breather. You know, these people live here a lifetime. What they're going through is untold suffering. Still more time here in Haiti. It's not over yet. So I'll see you in the next video. Dumbfounded I am. Absolutely dumbfounded. Thank you so much for watching. And in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.